Hello everyone, what is going on? And welcome back to our My Player Career Mode. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. I hope you are feeling fantastic and having an awesome day. We are back today as we look to see the season out with Villarreal and hopefully manage to get top four, which will mean Champions League football next season. If you missed the previous episode, Go back, watch it. Otherwise, I'm about to spoil what happened. If you did see it, though, you know we crashed out of the Europa League. A 4-0 defeat to Roma wasn't a good game for us. We had Europa League dreams and they quickly turned into Europa League nightmares. Regardless today, though, we are going to have an international friendly against the Czech Republic away. Then we take on Granada away before Osasuna away and finishing the episode with Bilbao at home. Real Madrid on the horizon, Betis as well. You can see some of the other games as we enter the final portion of this La Liga season. Standings wise, we are still in fourth as it loads for you here. We are on the same points as Barcelona and we are one ahead of Sevilla who are in fifth and we need the top four, remember. Real Madrid as well, not too far away. So if they drop some points, who knows? Maybe they will be pulled into this top four race as well. We might have four teams fighting for three spots, which would be very, very interesting. So let's go ahead. I do have four skill points to use at the moment. I think I will put these into the dribbling skill tree. We are trying to unlock the Lynx archetype. In fact, I still need one point. So maybe I'll hold on to these for now or do I just use them and then when I get the extra points, take them back out of where I put them. No, we'll hold on to them. And when we get the opportunity to unlock the Lynx archetype, we will go ahead and do that. And here we go then, the first game of the episode. We join 2-0 in front. We are on right wing to replace Bowen, Kane and Calvert-Lewin with the two goals. So we'll get half an hour or so here to impress Gareth Southgate before our return to Spain with Villarreal. Let's see what we can do in this match right here. And I know I say this at the start of every single episode, but truly thank you for the incredible support you lot are showing me right now. It's really cool to come home and see all the nice comments after a long day and read through them. And I have been seeing as James Ward-Prowse does score England's third of the game. I have been seeing some comments from you lovely people asking about a manager career mode. I do have plans for one, but it won't be right now. I've just got a lot on with uni and work and then, you know, coming home and recording my player videos. So I don't want to start a series that I'm not sure I'll be able to keep up with the episodes for just yet. So I am planning on a manager career mode, but of right now, it'll just be my player videos for the moment until I get some more time to be able to record some of those. And I actually think the goalkeeper should have saved James Ward-Prowse's shot there. Pressure put on Czech Republic here. They have to be calm and composed. And they weren't. They gave it away. Curtis Jones has the run of War Prowse and Kane. Kane's ball to Calvert-Lewin. I'm trying to stay on side here. And I think I might have just strayed off maybe. Nope. But I can't get round the defender just yet. So we'll hold on to it for England and play it back to Jones. Jones for Calvert-Lewin. He's got so much space. Why did he not shoot? It falls for Rice. Rice will shoot. War Prowse involved. Jones again. England looking for another one. Ball back post. Harry Kane's there. It is finally four. But Dominic Calvert-Lewin, such selfless play. He should have shot himself. He deserved to shoot himself. England, though, will celebrate their fourth goal of the game. And two goals since we joined it. So we are doing quite well here, that ball back post. When Kane gets goal side, you can't allow that for one. But then the goalkeeper decides to stay on his line. Maybe he should have come out and tried to challenge for the ball in the air, but he doesn't. Kane punishes them. Every single Czech Republic player back in their own half right now. They're struggling to get out of their defensive third. Ward Prowse, quick one-two with me. Releases us as the ball back into the box. Looking for Kane again. His header's there. It's looped over the goalkeeper. It's five for England. And the Czech Republic defence are just standing, watching the ball get into the box. Harry Kane gets his head to it. And it is a fantastic header as well. Goalkeeper at full stretch can't keep it out. 5-0 England. Seconds left of the game now as I was trying to play the ball into the feet of Curtis Jones. Gave it away though, but that is full time. England 5, Czech Republic 0. Harry Kane with a hat-trick. Two assists for us for Kane's headers as well. And it's a nice 30-minute display from us. Back to Spain with Villarreal as we go to Granada to try and keep momentum for the top four. Where are Granada in the table right now? They're second from bottom. 
and they've conceded the second most goals out of any team in La Liga. 60 goals conceded this season. So this is a real good opportunity for us, as I say, to get momentum going our way in this fight for the top four. The two lineups on your screen then, as we go to their place, 4-4-2 flat for us, a 4-4-2 holding for them. And we need a fast start here. We'll see if we get it. Miguel Rubio put under pressure here from Cramrich. Now Nunez getting involved as well. Cramrich once again will look to apply pressure. Granada have done well though to be able to create this maybe, but Pena's in the way of that pass. And now we can look forward for a breakaway. Cramrich, one, two with me, forward to Nunez. Nunez to Cramrich again. The run's been made, but he didn't spot it. Nunez, Cramrich, I'm trying to hold it here and make sure I can actually get some width. And now the ball out wide from Nunez does spot me. Ball back in for Dan Juma over the bar by Lopez. Granada struggling right now to be able to get out of their defensive third. Nunez going on the volley. How does that go in? Well, we won't care, but Darwin Nunez opens up the scoring. Little lofted ball over behind the defence of Granada. Nunez chests it, volleys it, goal. The pressure was mounted on Granada, though. There'd been a couple of chances just before this where Dan Juma's header had been tipped over the bar. And then we were still applying pressure every time Granada had cleared it. It was coming straight back at them. And there's the reward for the tremendous pressure that Villarreal have applied in the first 20 minutes. Villarreal in front, but we want to try and build on this if we can. Mikel Marino, now with the ball at his feet, has to go back though because Granada putting enough pressure to prevent the ball forwards, but now it has gone forwards and Peña's over on the right. Here is Ruben Peña. He cuts it back for Cramrich, saved by Lopez. Smart stop at his near post. Just the one goal in the first half and it went our way. Would really like a second though, just to make sure of the points here and stop any potential Granada fight back. Cramrich does win a corner right at the start of the second half, which we will go over to take. Now, looking at this, I think if I put it into this sort of area right here and put a lot of power on it, we whip it at pace and hope that someone gets there. Milenkovic does! Tipped over by Lopez. Corner didn't really go into the area I was hoping for. However, it still worked out. And Lopez had to be quick with the save. Parejo with the corner on the other side as we win the flick back for Milenkovic. And he now has to try and pick out a pass here. Dan Juma. There's a lot of Granada bodies behind the ball. In fact, only one player is not behind the ball for them. But Nunez is found by Dan Juma. And there's the second that Villarreal were hoping for. Just to gain complete control over the match. I think from this point on now, the points are safe. Dan Juma, really good in this tight area. Lovely touch. Second one just releases Nunez. Finish not completely in the corner, but it's enough to beat Lopez. He'd made a save moments before this from the corner. Miguel Rubio's free kick given straight back to Villarreal. Another wasted piece of possession for Granada. We keep the ball in play just about there. Thought for the moment it was going to trickle out of play. Here is Nunez on course for the hat-trick, finding Cramerich. Tell you what, Lopez, that's probably the best save of the game. Cramerich, Nunez, Cramerich, brilliant from these two. Cramerich for three. How about this, ladies and gentlemen, from Cramerich? It is delightful. I think when you look at this finish, it takes a few times before you really appreciate just how smart and how much quality is on this chip from Cramrich? Because it's not an easy thing to do. Goalkeeper comes out. He could have smashed it and hoped the ball would go past him. But no, the delicate little chip over the top. And it is Villarreal's third of the evening. And it's probably the pick of the three. You've got to say that. That was brilliant from Cramrich. Cramrich, Nunez, still on for his hat-trick, remember, as well. Darwin Nunez may get it here. The pass was in the end cut out by Bravo. Accuracy of passing today, 80% for Granada. They have given the ball away far too much. But Villarreal's not actually that much better at 88%. So we've also given the ball away a few times more than we would have been hoping to as Kramich does find me. I'm waiting for the run of Nunez. Looking for the hat-trick goal. Remember Darwin Nunez, but he selflessly lays it back. It's got to be four. It is four. And Villarreal are in cruise control. Nunez on a hat-trick, but he plays the ball back. We thank him for it by finishing the move off. We had to finish it. Imagine if we'd have put that wide or, or the keeper had saved it. Nunez wouldn't have been very happy with us. But fortunately for us, we didn't miss placing it in the corner.
Rooney with the throw out towards us as we are put under a bit of pressure here, but we've held on to the ball for the moment. Now Pena on the right-hand side. He's got there first, Pena. Four minutes left. Will there be a fifth for Villarreal? He's gone a long way here, Ruben Pena, but now he has to pick up the right pass. Cramrich to me. I've seen the run there of Coquelin, and somehow it's not five. A mixture of Lopez and the post stops Villarreal's fifth. We might get it from the corner. Trigueros, well, he sent it to the near post, which is where I was before I started coming for the short ball. So it should have just stayed at the near post in the end. It's Melisar. Now finds me. There's one player in the box to aim at, so I will go back here for Trigueros. He's done well. Now finding Coquelin. It's Melisar going for goal. Lopez keeps it out. Once again, full time. Villarreal 4, Granada 0, the final score. And we wanted a win and we sent a statement of intent there. Four goals, non conceded. Yes, Granada were in the relegation zone and they did make mistakes throughout the game, but we had to take our chances when they came our way and we did just that. Advance the days towards this Osasuna match and as you see, Sevilla have dropped points. They're four behind us now, so we have a little bit of breathing space in terms of points two behind Real Madrid and actually whilst we're here let's check out and see what Atletico have done they still remain nine points clear of us we are shortlisted as well for the player of the month of the last month just gone I believe that's not the news article where is the news article is it this one? Oh, we've won it well there you go we were shortlisted we've won it forget about the shortlist don't need to worry about that now so there is player of the month for March very happy with that into the game against Osasuna then. And these are the two lineups. A 4-4-2 flat and a 4-4-2 flat. So the exact same positions. Sorry, formations for the two lineups. And we are looking for two wins from two. Thiago Thomas, Spoonmere, Rooney. How's it? Not the goal. Osasuna denied. Right hand of Rooney to the rescue for Villarreal. Corner ball to defend now though. It's sent in. Nunez underneath the header. And we have got possession now then. We need to remain calm and composed here as we're put under a little bit of pressure. Back to Kramrich. Kramrich to Milenkovic. Milenkovic to Pena. And Villarreal have played their way out of defence brilliantly. Nunez, will he give us the run? Well, he opens up some space for us to drive into here, doing that little run. And they've backed off a long way here. Osasuna, and it's only just over the bar. Yavi Martinez, ball over the top. Cuartes away. And Pereira has to win the header, and he has done. Now me, Kramrich. Nunez, Kramrich again. Villarreal trying to create this opportunity. It's a good ball from Cramrich. Nunez waiting in the middle. Darwin Nunez! And there is the opener. We find Nunez and he finds the finish. And Osasuna, who had a bright start to the game. 20 minutes gone and now behind. They need to be careful this doesn't get worse. What they don't want now is Villarreal steamrolling forward and finding a second and then a third. And the game just getting away from them. Because it has been a bright positive start from the home team. But Nunez will never... Pass up an opportunity like that one. Osasuna coming forward then with Javi Martinez on the right. No chance for a cross just yet, but he finds Darko, who now has an opportunity. Milenkovic keeping his arms by his side, blocking the ball. And now the breakaway for Villarreal once again. Nunez with the run. And there's the pass to Nunez. And he's away. Is this about to be number two? I feel so, so bad for Osasuna. But they're being punished for their attempts at trying to an attack and Darwin Nunez has given Villarreal their second the counter attack we broke away one pass Nunez is in it's a brace and we've got a second assist but Osasuna had the ball in our half just didn't get the pass right and then it was about the breakaway at speed for Villarreal one minute of injury time Nunez for Villarreal that is half time and we will be booked for an earlier challenge in the half. It's a yellow card for us. But at half time, Villarreal 2. Osasuna 0 is the score. Half an hour still to play here. And Villarreal searching for another one. As we are into the penalty area. Looking back for Cramrich. He tried to place it. Bernardoni reacted. Pulled off the save. Cramrich went for placement instead of power. And in the end, it's not Villarreal's third. But it is a corner. Which is cleared away initially. Dan Juma. Coates. Nunez on a hat trick as well. Unable to find it against Granada. Will he get it here today? Dan Juma, ball out towards me. Dan Juma continues his run into the box. There he is again. Selfless towards Nunez. And there is the hat trick for Darwin Nunez. When I played the ball back into the middle, I was expecting Dan Juma to shoot. But he had other ideas as he lays it on a plate. And Nunez will be thanking him, I'm sure, as he'll take away the match ball. 
Mario Gomez controlling back towards Javi Martinez. A minute left plus injury time here. Villarreal will hold on to a victory, but will there be a consolation for Osasuna? Budimir shot. Milenkovic in the way. Parejo forwards looking for Nunez. And there's full time. Nunez's hat trick. Three points for Villarreal. And the quest for the top four is going swimmingly. Sevilla yet to play. So as we advance towards Bilbao, we'll see what result they manage. They failed to win, though. They might be seven behind us. And they did. There's a seven-point gap between fifth place Sevilla and fourth place Villarreal, third place Barcelona. So we have a massive advantage with seven matches to play. Sevilla's defeat has opened up a gap we can work with. Real two points ahead of us as well. And we will see what Atletico did. I imagine they won. They did. No, they didn't. They drew. Seven points now the gap to them. So... Atletico dropping points too. Who did they drop points to? Uh, they played Sociedad and drew 2-2. Sevilla were beaten by Bilbao, who we take on next. So Bilbao will be a tough opponent for our final game of the episode. So we do have to take that into consideration, of course, and think about that. With Real Madrid to come after this one, the final game of today at the Estadio de la Ceramica. It's Villarreal taking on Bilbao. And there are the two lineups. Breche Eze, nice to see him. He left Palace. We didn't get to play with him at Palace. He went to Bilbao. At least I don't think we played in the same team as him at the same time. We'll be against him today. Cramrich, Nunez, turning, looking for the ball back. Cramrich will get there first. Lovely. Nunez! Oh, it's magical! Cramrich and Nunez are forming quite the partnership for Villarreal as once again, Darwin Nunez smashes the ball into the back of the net. And Bilbao behind. Alongside them being a tough opponent, we saw them beat Sevilla. They're also fighting for Europe themselves, remember, against Betty. So it's all to play for, for Bilbao still. So they will take the game to us, but they'll have to do it from a goal to nil down. Cramrich back heel. Nunez finish. What's he on now? 10 in 10, Darwin Nunez. He cost 85 million. We know that, but that's still a great record. 10 goals in 10 matches. What a player. Coates, Milenkovic to his left as Milenkovic now then has a bit of space to work with. I'm just occupying this position right now. And the ball out wide here for Ruben Pena. Pena gets the ball inside to Cramrich. Off to Nunez, it's got to be two. He doesn't miss them. He does not miss them. The form he's in, this man is on fire. It's 2-0 Villarreal. Nunez 11 in 10. Tremendous. And at 1-0, just the slender 1-0. You're thinking there's still a chance for Bilbao. But does this goal stop any hopes of a Bilbao fight back? Well, the Villarreal fans will be hoping that that is the case. And as we enter the halftime whistle almost, we have a two-goal advantage courtesy of Darwin Nunez. Still a minute to go until halftime as well, so there is still time for us to maybe pick up another. The control inside the area is tremendous! It's three, Villarreal! And this is better than I was hoping it would be. I saw them beat Sevilla and thought, is this the first slip up in the form that we're in? Is this the moment where we drop points for the first time today? But in fact, it's probably been the most emphatic performance of the day. 45 played here, three nil Villarreal. Danny Garcia, David, it's nice football. And how is it not a goal? It might be now, though. Vargas has pulled a goal back for Bilbao. Really doing well initially to deny a Brecciese. But then Vargas follows up on the rebound. And it is a goal back for Bilbao. I hope that this is not the start of a comeback for Bilbao. Got to get control back in the game. Ball was nicely worked. Look at this for moves. And then Jonathan David to a Brecciese. Shot saved. Vargas pops up. 3-1. I was just going to say... What would be the ultimate dream is if... Oh, I didn't mean to ask for the pass there. What would be the ultimate dream is if we came out of game and found that Sevilla had dropped yet more points. They were seven behind us, weren't they, before? So if they lose and we win here, that would be ten behind with only six games to go. So that would be, I think, pretty much top four done for us. But do remember, we have got Real next. A Villa to make it. Three, one. Sorry, four, one, in fact. Three goal advantage restored. And just as Bilbao looked like they might have some life in them, we shut them back down. Cramrich leaving the field of play. And Villa's first touch since coming on is to score the goal. 
any moment now. There is the full-time whistle. 4-1 Villarreal, a statement victory for top four hopes as I'll stay with you to sign off the rest of the episode and see if Sevilla have dropped more points. Imagine if they have, as uh, in the end, it was a fantastic display from Villarreal. Seven shots, four goals, five shots, one goal for Bilbao. And there is no other game going on, apparently, at this moment in time, so we can't yet see what's happened. I am in the subs bench for the next game because my rating has dropped too low with Unai Emery, but when we train, we should be back into the starting 11. We are for the minute... But I wonder, with that game coming up against Real Madrid, are we going to be in the starting 11? Because you can see my bar for the manager rating is really low. Right, standings. You're probably already seeing it there. But Sevilla, 63 points. We move to 72. We are five away from Atletico, who have dropped yet more points. Who did they play? They drew with Sevilla, in fact. So if we beat Real at the start of next episode, we will leapfrog them onto 75 points. And if the result elsewhere goes in our favour in the game involving Atletico and Granada, we might be two behind the league leaders. Is a title possible? Well, top four, I think, is pretty much done unless we have a massive collapse in terms of our results. But title... Is it doable? Atletico, pressure on them. They should beat Granada. But then they face... Who after that? we still got to play Real Madrid and then Betis. They still have to play Barcelona, Atletico. I'm not going to speak just yet. But we'll keep our eyes on the top spot for the moment. But that is where we'll end today's episode, my friends. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, a like would be greatly appreciated. Let's aim for 900 likes. You legends will probably reach that. Because you're all absolutely amazing. Player growth, there's our attributes. Personality-wise, there's the points. And if we take a look at the squad hub as well before we go today, if you want to check out a player in more detail on how they've got on in terms of their performance this season, pause it on the player that you wish to look at. I want to see how the uh, the boys getting on in the way of goals. So Dan Juma's got 11 and 8 assists in 32. That's a really, really good return for Dan Juma. Parejo with 5. Marino, we saw, he's in good form in front of goal. 11 and 8 as well in 32 for him. As I scroll down, uh, Ismail Assar has won in 22, but he's come off the bench a lot. So that is really the reason why. We've got nine assists, nine goals in the league. So that's 18 goal contributions in 13 games. Cranwich with six and six. Nunez, 11 in 10 with nine assists. He's had 20 goal contributions in 10 matches. That's insane from Darwin Nunez. And like I said previous, let's wait for the first full season and see just how much this Villarreal side tear apart La Liga. For now, though, that's the end of the episode. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Look after each other. And I'll catch you all again soon. Until the next one, adios.